So let's talk about center fire materials. Let's start with brass. Yeah, so when you're talking about brass and we're talking about the shell cases, that's really your most common shell case you're going to find. It expands well, it's very easy to um, maneuver that metal. So when we draw metal, brass is a great product for that. Um, it's been around for a long time. It's kind of the go-to material when it comes to center fire. It's definitely the most common one that I've seen. Uh, the next one's gonna be steel. Yeah, so steel shell cases, if you think about like Winchester's USA Forge 9 millimeter, that product is made out of steel. It is a little bit more affordable than brass because just the material steel is typically cheaper than brass. Um, but a lot of times you won't find a lot of steel out there because it does require a bit more engineering. Some of the things that we've done is to really engineer that with the exact same bullets, powder and primer that we use in our standard brass nine millimeter case. Um, some steel case stuff actually will, you'll see sparking kind of thing going on. It'll be very dirty and sometimes it might even damage your gun. But Winchester's done a lot of work to engineer our steel products to be able to basically run just like brass. All right, cool. So what about nickel? So nickel, when you're seeing nickel on a shell case, which sometimes could be slightly confused with steel, but the nickel is typically a lot more shiny. It's, it's bright and it's really a plating. So when you're seeing nickel, that's plated on top of a brass shell case. Okay. So we've got brass, nickel, steel. Am I missing anything? Sometimes you may find some polymer case materials out there, particularly in rifle. That's a bit of a newer thing, um, but they're kind of rare, but that isn't a material that people have begun to start to work with. But by and large, brass is still the king there. So the most common bullets that you're going to encounter are copper and lead combination. So you'll have a copper jacket with a lead core. Sometimes you will even find solid lead bullets out there, um, but by and large, it's that copper jacket lead core situation. But there also are a lot of just solid lead-free copper bullets out there. We actually have a product like that, Copper Impact, sitting here, solid copper with a polymer tip. Um, sometimes you'll find other different materials maybe inside of those bullets. Like sometimes we load some bullets with a zinc core, some may even have a steel core. We're gonna build up that weight to be able to achieve the performance we're looking for out of that given cartridge. And what about polymer? So polymer, a lot of times polymers are going to be used in the polymer tip. So when you're looking at specifically rifle bullets, you can see here on Copper Impact, and we have another product with Deer Season where we actually have a polymer tip on there. And those polymer tips help to improve ballistics. They help to improve your trajectory and help to initiate expansion. But a lot of times that's what the polymers are going to be used for is in the tip of that bullet. So Callie, let's take this bullet as a for instance, this is an Acubon bullet, but it has multiple materials in it. So you can see down here in the base, that's actually lead core that's swaged into the base of that bullet. And then you have a, it's really a copper jacket that goes entirely around this entire bullet with a polymer tip. So three different materials to make up this one bullet. So it just kind of highlights the engineering and the different materials that have to go into something like this to be able to get the performance we're looking for. So at the end of the day, the end use is gonna determine the type of materials that you're looking for for your ammunition. Whether it's steel, nickel, or brass, finding out what you're gonna be using it for is gonna set you up for success.